Hi there, Thunkers, and welcome to another video. In this video, we will discuss using functions in your Thunkable project. A function is a reusable block of code that you call from other blocks of code in your project. One function can be called multiple times from different blocks of code. Functions are useful because they reduce the amount of blocks you need in your project. When you have fewer blocks, it means that your app performance will be faster. If you use one function multiple times, it's easier to update one function than to update many sets of blocks. Let's take a look at this simple hello app. When the screen opens, we will see hello plus the last saved name. And when we click a button, it'll say hello plus the new name we have typed in. Looking at the blocks, we see almost identical blocks in the when screen opens and when button click blocks. If I right click here, we'll see that this project has 30 blocks but I can reduce this number by creating a function called show name in label. I can see that when the screen opens and when the button is clicked, I change the text of a label and I change the disabled property of a button. I will simply copy these identical blocks into my function, then delete these blocks from the original event blocks. And instead, when my screen opens and when my button is clicked, I will call my function. We can now see that this screen has 26 blocks. This is over a 10% reduction in blocks. If we test our project again, we see that the functionality has not been affected. And now if we want to change the message, for example, if we want to say, hi there, instead of hello, we only need to make that change in one place in our blocks. And again, we test the project and it works just as expected. Another advantage to using functions is that using clear function names will make your code more readable. For example, in the sign-in tutorial we made before, we said that when the user clicks this button called sign up or in, we will either sign them up or sign them in. This code is very easy to read because when sign up or in is clicked, we call the function sign up or we call the function sign in. This code would be much less readable if all of these long blocks of code were all inside the when button click block. You can also feed an input value to your function. Your function can then take different actions depending on the value of this input. For this example, let's take a look at this project with a slider and a reset button. When we slide the slider, we change the size of the font of our labels. And when we click reset, the font size of the labels is reset. When you add a function to your project, you can click the gear icon to add inputs to your function. You can also rename these inputs. You can see that my function change font size has an input called font size, and that if I add another input to this function, you'll see the shape of the block that calls this function change as it now has space for another input. To remove an input from your function, simply drag the input name out of this block. We can see that the app works by calling this function when the slider changes, with the font size being the new value of the slider, and we call the function when the button is clicked with the font size 18 to reset the font size of the text. You can also create a function that returns an output. You can then use the output of this function as a value in your project. For example, using it to set the text of a label. To create a function that returns an output, simply get this block from the function drawer that has a return block. The value that is returned will be the output of your function. So here we have an app that takes some text and converts it to base64. I'll quickly demonstrate it for you here. So when we look at the blocks, we can see that we have used a function to contain all of the blocks to convert the text to base64. I won't go into detail with these blocks, but this project is available to remix in the description of this video. What's important is that you can see that we go through all of these blocks and then we return a string of text which is our original text converted to base64. While the function itself is complicated, we can see that getting the converted value was very simple. We simply call our base64 function with the string we want to convert and an empty list. We can then set a component's text to the result of this function. Please note that if you want to copy this screen, you also need to copy over this data source. And that is an introduction to using functions in your Thunkable project. Thank you so much for watching, and as ever, thanks for thunking.